Hey, so I'm coming to you from my store in Poulsbo, Washington. I decided to film here today instead of at home because I brought all the loot that I found over this last It was Mother's Day weekend, but I had already started thrifting on Thursday as I worked my way to um, somebody who had brought the boho dresses uh, from Mexico for me in their RV. They live not too far away from me, but far enough so that it was kind of a trip, a road trip out there. So I stopped at some thrift stores and uh, picked up a whole bunch of stuff. So my first stop was this little thrift store in Shelton. They had a bunch of furniture outside. I thought these craftsman style chairs were really cool actually. Not that I'm looking for furniture. This store is pretty jam packed. I especially like these kind of pine, lodge pine chairs here with the rush seats. And the set of three of these were only $35. So um, with some reupholstery, those could be super cool. Once inside, um, I had to kind of dig for the few items that I bought. This store is a jumble of kind of leftover garage sale items, but I have scored a couple things in the past. Like I really like those little orange glasses, but they were pretty faded. I grabbed this stool for $5. The wood's in mint condition and I'm gonna recover the top. And I kind of like this 80s print. 80s are coming back in style, but in our area, not quite yet. I thought this one was cool and I would have snagged it if it was an oil, but it was actually just a print. That poodle's adorable. But I grabbed this one because nudes sell. My next stop in Shelton was the Hub Shop. This charity shop actually benefits the Senior Center, which is attached to the thrift store. And I have actually scored a ton of stuff here in the past, mostly clothes and accessories. Everything is really well curated here. But on this day, which was a Thursday, um, I was one day off from their 50% off sale that they have every month. And I kind of cruised through the whole store and then I decided to take a chance. So I went up to the sales clerk and I asked her if she wanted to make a deal. I would spend $125 or more if she would give me 50% off today, you know, that Thursday instead of Friday. And she hesitated for a minute, but then she decided it was worth it. I wound up spending $226 and I bought a ton of stuff. So I benefited, the store benefited, the senior center ben benefited, and everybody was happy. I thought this kitty was cute and I can't believe I didn't buy him. I really can't. I left him behind. I even put him in my basket. So this is a little pie bird. People would use these um, you know, before the 1950s to punch holes in their pies before they put them in the oven so that they would vent. That little kitty did come with me though.
totally mid-century. I've had a lot of black cats like that in the store and they always sell. Oh, there I am putting them back. Come on, little kitty. You're coming home with me. I think I did grab these brass candlesticks. Candle, uh, brass always sells really well. I definitely grabbed that Art Deco 1980s Calla Lily vase. They're not that valuable yet. Again, I think we're kind of on the cusp of the 1980s really making a big hit. But I thought it was pretty. And I did grab this uh, earthenware jug though. I think it would be cool with like some dried plants in it. Those were cool. I should have grabbed those. Anyways, sometimes it's hard to say no to things, but I only have so much time to list stuff. Now this one, I cannot believe I left behind. That is the coolest drinks pitcher. And I think like one of my customers would love that. Those are kind of cool, a sugar and a creamer. Although people are really getting away from like sugar and creamers. I always look at the bottom of plates and bowls. Those are super pretty. So these are from the 1940s. I think those were magnolia leaves. I thought this little teapot was kind of cool. It would definitely keep your tea warm because it was really thick. And I almost snagged these ones, but the wood was really in rough shape. I love the colors on this decorative, prob probably a tourist plate. And I can't remember where it was made. It kind of looks Mexican, but I'm gonna say it's probably Italian. This one I did snag. I'm not quite sure what you would use it for, but I thought it was pretty cool. Now that is super pretty. I mean, it doesn't have any use whatsoever except for being decorative, but I love that pink. And I thought this was really cool. It's kind of a Norwegian design. Lots of cutesy stuff. Now somebody donated their whole owl collection. Oh, that green owl is cute. But the one I wound up bringing home is this little orange owl. It is straight up 70s. And super cute. Look at those eyes. Yes, look at those eyes. I should have grabbed that little green one. He's adorable too. That is one passionate embrace right there. A little too risky. So again, lots of cutesy stuff. But this mug was intriguing. It was super heavy and I loved that blue color. So that one I did snag. I 
I could not figure out what that was. And then I finally saw it. It's a hippopotamus, and I think it was an ashtray. Pretty funky. And I totally would have snagged that Tonka truck, but it was way out of my budget. They wanted $175 full price. Oh, there they are. They're at it again. They're at it again. I grabbed this jug. I think it's great for utensils. And then it was time to make my way to my neighbor's place. They're actually my neighbors in Mexico. And I knew that they were gonna live in a cool house, but this was awesome. Look at what he did. They are both artists and there was just so much creativity and artistry in their home that I had to take some videos. Look at the fence made from driftwood. He covered that whole house with wood like that so it looks rustic and cool. And they spent a lot of time putting together their garden. So look at all the art, look at the textiles. I mean, I just love going in people into people's homes when they really let their creativity flow. And I especially like people that have eclectic tastes because none, nothing that they do is ever cookie cutter. It's all unique to them. But they just had some really wonderful pieces. Very unique, obviously. And being artists, they have such a good eye. <laughs> they, were, they were asking what I was doing. I had to tell them that I have a YouTube channel and that I had to get a bit of their house into the video. So look at this. Now this is so cool. It's very Northwest with all of the wonderful tribal native american textiles obviously there's a lot from south america because they have a house down there as well but the cohesiveness of this space is amazing but look at that you know obviously it looks like there's some turkish kaleems and uh, textiles from other parts of the world those are um yarn art so I may break this up into two videos but let's just get started and let me show you what I found because we're getting into summer, I am on the lookout for vintage sunglasses. And so I actually did pick some vintage sunglasses up at the flea market, but I just wanted to show you a couple that really stood out to me. So these are pilot glasses. So I guess you can call them aviator glasses. They're not shaped in that aviator style that we're familiar with, but I love them. They're very vintage and I put uh, $25 on them. They even come with the case. So I don't know, they're probably from the 80s, but they are super cool and I think somebody will snatch those up fast. And then the other pair are, are these kind of like John Lennon glasses, um, so they're on the small side, but uh, these are also super cool and I can't even tell you the era, I mean, I'm. I'm gonna venture to say maybe like the 70s. I don't know, maybe the 80s. And I put $18 on them and they're gonna stay in the store. I know I mentioned this in the past, but the 80s are coming back in style. So I was excited to pick up this floral um, lamp. It's very, very 80s with the irises on it. And it's kind of this cool, round, flat shape. Um, 
I am going to put that, I think, online and I will put probably $55 on it and I will ship it as is, obviously, without a lampshade. Uh, somebody can find their own lampshade to match, but I think this is going to go quick. Then the second 80s item I found is this really sculptural vase. And again, it's got like these calla lilies on it and uh, this kind of stripe design, which is very indicative of the 80s. Even the vase top looks like a calla lily. So I think I'm also going to put this one online and I will put um, $45 on it. So now that I know that earthenware, stoneware does really, really well, um, I am on a mission to actually put, bring in a ton of that into the store. So let's go through each piece and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them because there's so many of them, but I'm, I just want to show you. So this first one is this serving piece and it's got a little thing in the middle. So I don't know what that's supposed to be for. If anybody can tell me, I would certainly appreciate it. I mean, kind of looks like a bunk cake, but uh, I love the color. I love that it has a lid, um, very pretty. And I don't know, I'm gonna put $25. This one's super cute and uh, it is a little honey pot. It's also got a lid and it's got the little uh, divot in there so that you can put a spoon in there or a wood honey dipper. And I like the colors, I like the glaze. And on this one, uh, it just says stoneware handmade in Ireland by McCluskey La Movida. So it's signed, so that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna put um, $16. Now we're getting into more um, decorative pieces. So this is a vase. I mean, it's tiny, <laughs> the hole is tiny. Um, and so I think, you know, honestly, for anything more than just like a dried plant, um, I think that's probably the only thing that I would use it for as a dried plant. But I liked the glaze on it. I thought that was cool. Um, and I'll probably price that at like $23 and I need to get to like Hobby Lobby or Michael's to actually get some dried um, plants to actually display these in the store. This next one I thought was really cool also. It's a little pot also with a lid. So apparently if they have a lid, I'm game. So this one, um, the colors are a little more vibrant. It's got the blue and the brown and um, you could use it for anything. I would probably put sugar in here. And this one looks to be hand done or artist created. And I will put $15 on that. This to me always, when it has a big round hole like that, I always think utensils. So perfect for your utensils. And I'll put $16 on this one. I have never picked up a coffee mug before for the store or to sell online, but I did fall in love with this one. I thought it was so, I thought the color was amazing. And then it's got like this etched glass, etched design on it. And then the inside is like this darker blue. I think it's so pretty. And I'm gonna put $12. I mean, if somebody doesn't buy this, I may take this home myself. The other item I picked up at that particular little thrift store I was telling you about are these mixed metal napkin rings. So these so remind me of the 70s. So mixed metals were really popular in the 70s and I actually had a pair of shoes that were like this brass and this, um, this brass, copper, silver look. And I'm kind of digging the fact that they're coming back into style. So I'll keep these in the store, but I like them so much I've marked them at $18. And I'm sure they will sell to some boho check because you know this is kind of on the boho side now. So sometimes it's a 
clothing week, an accessory week, or it could just be vintage and collectibles. Sometimes I'm on the hunt for furniture. This last week, I don't know why, but I, you know, I had the feeling I really wanted to look for like vintage leather goods. And I think, you know, I believe in the power of attraction and whatever you focus on, you bring about. And so look at this. I found this great leather bag. It looks vintage. It's a backpack and it's just got all the leather vibes that you could possibly want, right? So I think it's a cool bag. If I didn't already have so many of them, I would keep it for myself. And then along those lines, I found this super cool, just a minute, just a minute, very vintage leather bag. So this is really cool and um, I don't even know what I'm gonna price it, but I wanna put this one online. I, I think I'm gonna probably price it at $55. It's straight up 70s. I probably had one identical to this as a teenager and you know, I dig it. I think somebody else will too. Moving right along, uh, we're still talking about leather, right? Um, we sell a ton of belts in the store. And so look at this. I picked up all of these wonderfully patinaed leather belts. And, you know, I paid anywhere between like $3 and maybe $6 for them. And we typically will sell leather belts for um, 12 to $15. Um, but, uh, if they're very, very special, like I brought back some really awesome belts from Texas that were really amazing, very elaborately hand tooled leather belts. And once in a while I'll find a batch of like a high end Italian belts that are pretty spendy. And those, you know, will price accordingly 45 to $75. But for the most part, our prices are about 12 to $15. Although I might raise them. I mean, I think some of these are like this one. Look at the detail on that. I mean, look at that. That is really cool. And I think on this one, because it is very vintage, I mean, that's like tapas like tapestry or brocade in there. Um, like on this one, I'll put $25 because I think it's worth that. And I think somebody is willing to pay that. The other thing that we sell a lot of are hats. So I love hats. I I can wear a hat because I have the right head shape. Um, like, and then, so anyways, I picked up a couple of hats. I mean, I'm always on the lookout for hats. This one I feel like is a little bit small, but I picked up two of them. They're both very vintage, as you can see on the inside of them, very, very vintage. And, you know, I typically will price these anywhere between $30 and $45. I mean, I think these ones are in the $35 category, um, mainly because they're vintage and they were really well taken care of and they will last decades longer. So super cute. Talking about cute, I picked up this little owl. <laughs> He is also straight up 70s and I don't th have a thing for owls, but I know other people do. And I just saw him, I thought he was adorable. So um, I'm gonna, I don't know. I don't know if I should put him in the store or actually put him online. Maybe I'll try him online and we'll see what happens. I also picked up these little Native American salt and pepper shakers. That's the other thing that um, we sell when I when I can find them and they're, they're cute like this, they sell really well. And we usually price these at $15 because um, these are so adorable and they're very vintage. I think I'm gonna put 20. Um, and usually you'll see made in Japan. So apparently Japan was a huge manufacturer of salt and pepper shakers. Um, not any 
type of salt and pepper shakers, but novelty shakers, right? So they made massive quantities of novelty shakers for export into the US. So when you see made in Japan, um, that that's gonna be an old salt and pepper shaker um, anywhere between the 1940s and the 1960s. So this is me signing off, but I wanted to show you these Hollywood Regency lamps that I got um, as part of the loot from Mother's Day week. And they are super awesome. And I'm gonna price them at $175. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you get out to go junking, I hope that the junking gods are with you and that you have a marvelous day. So see you soon. Bye.